You are in control of who you follow, who you give attention to, who you allow to get in your head and into your personal space. My name is Roshni and this video is on five ways to declutter emotionally. Well, it's obviously the start of a new year, 2020 is upon us, and one of the best things to do when you are working on healing for yourself is not just learning new things and starting new practices or habits, which are all of course great things to do, but also getting rid of a lot of baggage is super, super important. So in this video, I'm sharing five ways that you can declutter emotionally so that you can let go of a lot of things that happened in the past, forgive yourself, and just move forward with a happy and healthy future. So the first thing you can declutter is social media and your newsfeed. So obviously our news feeds have a big impact on us and even if we're just mindlessly scrolling whenever we're doing something or at work or in the bathroom or whatever, it ends up affecting you emotionally and even recently I've experienced this a lot where I'll be scrolling through Instagram whether it's people who I know or like celebrities or bloggers that I follow and just getting like feelings of FOMO or feelings of just not feeling that great about myself, kind of losing my perspective on the fact that like I'm on my own path, like everything that I see is either too perfect or just kind of toxic and you are in control of who you follow, who you give attention to, who you allow to get in your head and into your personal space. Whether it is unfriending people or muting certain people, like you might still, you know, have a great relationship with them, but their posts don't necessarily make you feel the best. And that's completely okay. It just allows you to still keep that connection, still keep that interaction in some way, but you have more control of it rather than you just kind of being overwhelmed by someone's perfect life or by someone's ideas that you may not agree with. You can just mute what they have and then revisit that later. If you don't miss them at all, if you end up kind of drifting apart and not talking, then maybe you can move a step further and actually unfriend them or unfollow them. I felt like who you know and who you follow is just what it is. I didn't used to think that I had any control over that, but you honestly do and it makes such a big difference. And I honestly go through cycles. Sometimes my newsfeed is all people I know. Sometimes it's all people that are famous or that I look up to or who I admire. And you know, I go back and forth and it just reminds you that you have control over how you feel and you have control with how you interact with the world. So just because people are saying things or doing things doesn't mean that you have to be as involved in them as they are. And when social media is something that you interact with on almost a daily basis, changing about your newsfeed can have significant effects on making you feel more positive, just more lightweight, more free, and just not as bogged down by all these ideas and expectations that are floating around. The second thing that you can do to declutter emotionally is letting go of expectations. And there's so many times um, in our day-to-day -day life where we feel like we should do something or we should be a certain way. And whether it is expectations from people that you used to know or your hometown or your family or your friends, there are so many people who have ideas about how we should live our lives. And honestly, yes, it's important to, you know, take other people's advice sometimes, but you always need to run it through yourself first, because at the end of the day, you're going to be the person, the only person that has to live with the life that you chose for yourself. And, you know, so many people wake up when they're like 45 and have a total midlife crisis because maybe they spent their entire life doing what they should do and doing what everyone else does. And then they feel like they might not even know themselves, whether it is, you know, getting married or having kids or choosing a certain career path, that that is truly what you want because that, those decisions are going to determine what your life looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. So no matter what it is, make sure that you are not just doing what you should do and not just performing what people expect of you. Like, it doesn't mean that things aren't going to be hard. Relationships get hard. Careers and jobs get hard. Kids obviously get hard. There's all these different things that have their own challenges and that's okay but is that challenge going to build resentment because you're only doing it for other people and trying to fill this certain role that you've been told to fill or is it going to be challenging because that's what it is but you won't choose to rise to the occasion because it's a decision that you made revisit your expectations and 
let yourself see what other people want of you and what you truly want for yourself and allow that to be something that you explore. The third thing that you need to do to emotionally declutter is look at your friends and the people that you surround yourself with. It's really important to have people in your life that support you and people that encourage you. And I think we've all had the experience, whether it was in high school or at just at some point in our lives where we had friends that we thought we could be completely honest with or vulnerable with, but a lot of times they would, you know, use that against you or put you down. And I've started many new friendships over, you know, the course of my life and I've reconnected with um, people that I used to be friends with as well. So just because you drift away doesn't mean that you can't reconnect with someone that you felt like was really there for you and that you really connected with. But um, it's just important to know, you know, why you're friends with them and what they add to your life. And it's not all about you. Um, you need to do things to be a good friend as well, but just evaluate those relationships and make sure that, you know, they're there for you when things are bad and they're happy for you when things are good. But if you notice that, you know, no matter what you do and how good of a friend you are, if that's not being reciprocated, then it might just be time to kind of drift apart and find some friendships that suit you better. The fourth way to emotionally declutter is let go of your limiting beliefs. And what limiting beliefs are, are basically ideas that you have about yourself that hold you back. So whether it's, you know, I'm never going to be skinny or I'm never going to be my goal weight. The idea that you are never going to be in a happy relationship or that every time you're in a relationship, it's going to end negatively or you're going to get cheated on. About your career, you're never going to make more than X amount of money or you're never going to reach, you know, the certain place on the ladder that you want to be. And limiting beliefs are usually subconscious. We're not always, you know, actively thinking, oh, I need to date someone that totally sucks because I deserve that and that's the only type of partner I'll have. Like, usually we don't go into things thinking that way consciously, but because of the things that we've observed and the things that we've experienced in the past or seen other people experience, we end up creating those ideas about, you know, what it means to be in a relationship and what it means to um, have a partner or what a marriage means and things like that. So from those ideas, we end up limiting ourselves and limiting the good things that could come our way because we're kind of subconsciously sabotaging ourselves by saying, oh, well, this is what it is and I'm going to do everything in my power to recreate that story because that's what I believe and so that's what's what I'm going to attract, essentially. So there's actually a level of law of attraction in this as well. So whether you want to acknowledge it or not, your limiting beliefs and your beliefs about how the world exists are already there. So it's up to you to discover what they are and to turn them around. So when you take those beliefs and you finally recognize them, they go from being a subconscious thing that's kind of controlling your actions and having a role in how you live your life to a conscious belief. And from there, you can use affirmations and you can use, you know, certain statements. You can be more aware of how you're thinking and how you hold yourself back in order to actually change that narrative around and stop those limiting beliefs in their tracks so that you can actually live out your dream life and you can actually get what you deserve. The fifth thing that you can do to emotionally declutter is stop self-shaming. And this is something that we are all guilty of. Um, we all really just kind of get on ourselves and put ourselves down for choices that we've made in the past or who we've become or people that we've surrounded ourselves with. Even if this video inspires you to change some things about your life, that's okay. Don't get in your head about it though. Just realize it and do it and then forgive yourself for you know any mistakes that you might have made or forgive yourself for how you may have treated yourself in the past write down or document your thought cycle in some way so if you are really feeling bad or you're getting yourself in your head what we don't realize is a lot of the thoughts that we have repeat over and over and over again whatever one thought tumbles into becomes a thought cycle right it's like a group of thoughts that all go together once you think that you made a mistake then you feel like you're bad then you feel like you don't deserve good things then you feel like your life is always going to be the same and even if your thought pattern is a little bit different from that it's really important to understand it because when those thoughts are individually coming at you you feel like you need to believe every single one of them but what you really need to do is group them together and say whoa that's like that negative whirlwind thought cycle that I always have once I get to that first thought of saying I made a mistake I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to say, I know what happens next. I've heard this before and it does not serve me. So what I need to do is just lump all those thoughts together and just 
push them away because I can choose what I want to think. So instead of saying that you made a mistake, just say, I'm so proud of myself for learning something new. I'm so proud of myself for taking control in this moment and moving my life forward in a different direction. And that's all you need to think. Um, so the way that you can document your thought cycles is either through a brain dump or, um, which is basically just a stream of consciousness writing. Um, but one thing that's my favorite to do is either use a voice memo or just a video on my phone and just pull it out and just kind of word vomit everything that's on my mind, right? So sometimes it's hard when you're sitting there and thinking and trying to write things down and you're writing usually isn't as fast as you're thinking. So when you have just a phone in front of you and you're taking a video or taking a voice memo and you're saying, you know, I, I, this happened and then I feel like I just made a mistake and then I feel like because of that, you know, I'm always wrong, I'm always making bad decisions, I'm a bad person and you're just telling yourself this to your phone, it becomes easier to recognize and then it separates yourself and who you actually are at your core from those thoughts and that separation is key because that distance from what your thoughts are to who you are is what is going to create the space that you need to change that narrative. All right, guys, well, those are my five ways to emotionally declutter. And I hope that you feel a lot lighter after trying some of these tips. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. And I love you all very much. Happy healing.